Hi, radio fans. Welcome to Behind the Mic from otrpodcast.com. I'm your host, Austin Vock, and on this podcast, we explore the history behind many of old-time radio's greatest performances. We jump around from series to series, picking one episode each week, and together we learn about the actors, producers, sponsors, and more before listening to that full episode as it was originally broadcast. If you have feedback for today's show or have a great idea for a future podcast, please send me an email at contact at otrpodcast.com. You can also send me a voice message by clicking the link in the show notes, or if you're watching this on YouTube, just leave a comment down below. Today's episode will begin after a brief message from our sponsor. In 1930, Simon & Schuster published the first book in their Inner Sanctum anthology series. The series featured serious drama and romance, but became best known for its mysteries. In the 1940s, Simon & Schuster licensed the name for a radio program on condition that the announcer would promote the latest book title published in the series at the end of each broadcast. On January 7, 1941, the very first episode of the Inner Sanctum radio program premiered on the NBC network. The series featured stories of mystery, terror, and suspense, and its tongue-in-cheek introductions were in sharp contrast to shows like Suspense and The Whistler. The program's familiar and famed audio trademark was the eerie creaking door, which opened and closed the broadcast. The show's creator, Hyman Brown, got the idea from a door in the basement of an old studio that made a horrible creaking sound when it opened. The program did originally intend to use a door, but on its first use, the door did not creak. Undaunted, Brown grabbed a nearby chair, sat in it, and turned, causing a hair-raising squeak. That chair was used from then on as the sound prop. On at least one memorable occasion, a staffer innocently repaired and oiled the chair, thus forcing the sound man to mimic the squeak orally. Today's episode is the 204th in the series and was originally broadcast on November 28, 1944, the same day that Albania was liberated from Nazi control. Please enjoy The Voice on the Wire from Inner Sanctum. Colgate Tooth Powder presents Inner Sanctum Mysteries. Good evening, friends of the... Inner Sanctum. This is your host, Raymond, inviting you in through the squeaking door. Well, it's so nice of you to come here tonight and uh, help me sit up with the corpse. Hey, such dull company, so cold and stiff, bored with being dead. All the uh, life seems to have gone out of him. What? You say you've seen him before. Oh, no, he's not that horror man who plays in pictures. But he does look like him. So much so, in fact, you might even call him a dead ringer. (laughs) Tonight's Inner Sanctum Mystery, Voice on the Wire, is an original radio drama by Robert Sloan and stars Miss Leslie Woods in the role of Geraldine Reeves. It's produced under the direction of Hyman Brown. Use Colgate Tooth Powder, keep smiling just right. Use it each morning and use it at night. Don't take a chance with your romance. Use Colgate Tooth Powder. Romance. What is romance? Romance is the light on the path of love. But a light so delicate that even a breath may put it out. Even a breath. You'd hate that to happen to you, wouldn't you? Well, don't let a breath of trouble ruin your romance. Don't let unpleasing breath offend the one you love. I tell you what. Brush your teeth night and morning and before every date with Colgate Tooth Powder. Because scientific tests have definitely proved that in seven cases out of ten, Colgate Tooth Powder instantly stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth. And let me add... Colgate Tooth Powder is the only tooth powder that offers proof of this fact. And then, too, Colgate Tooth Powder cleans your teeth beautifully. No amount of money can buy you a dentifrice that will clean your teeth more quickly and thoroughly. Remember the name Colgate Tooth Powder with the accent on powder. Don't take a chance with your romance. Use Colgate Tooth Powder. No 
doubt the telephone is an ingenious invention, but um, as far as I know, no one as yet has been able to commit murder over it. Although many people have wanted to. Still, there are worse things you can get on the phone than the wrong number, especially if you happen to call the voice on the wire. On a long, narrow island just off the shore of one of our larger lakes, Mrs. Geraldine Reeves, widow of the late composer David Reeves, lives alone in a gaunt, gray, shingled house. Only a few hundred yards away are the charred remains of her former home where David was burned to death in a fire just two years ago. It's after dinner now, and as the clock in the hall strikes eight, You've got to get hold of yourself, Geraldine. I can't help it, Doctor. You see, it starts every night about this time. What starts? The music. David's last composition. I hear it being played on a piano. And the notes seem to come from the old house, the house where David died in the fire. Well, perhaps someone is playing that piece on the piano. Someone on the island. No. No, there's only one other house out here, and those people are away. And the dog. The dog keeps howling all night long. What dog? I don't know. There's no dog on the island, but... David and I did have a dog. You remember? He stayed with David the night of the fire. He died with him because David was too ill to get out of bed. There! There it is again! It's amazing. That's a real dog. Somewhere on this island. Do you think so? I... Why, of course. Probably some stray got across the bridge or swam over from the shore. Well, you see, I... Oh, excuse me, Doctor. Certainly. Hello? Hello. Mrs. Geraldine Reeves. Yes, speaking. Who is this? Listen. Good heavens! You have four hours to live, Mrs. Reeves. Four hours to live. What? What did you say? Hello! Hello! What's the matter, Geraldine? The music. The same music. I heard it again. What? Over the phone. Someone's playing it on the piano. It must be some sort of a prank. No, no, no. A man spoke to me. He said I have four hours to live. Four hours to... Here. Let me have that phone. No, no. It's, it's no use. He's rung off. Well, I... we might be able to trace the call. Hello, operator, operator. Somebody's trying to kill me. Hello, operator. Operator. What's wrong, doctor? I, I'm afraid the wires have been cut. We'd better get into my car and drive into town right away. Yes, yes, it isn't safe for me to stay here another minute. understand it. The motor won't turn over. Somebody must have meddled with this car while we were in the house. Well, try my car, Doctor. I think perhaps I'd better. Is it in the garage? Yes, yes, I left. Great heavens, it's gone. The garage is empty. The car has been stolen. Now, let's not lose our heads, Geraldine. But... We're not completely cut off yet. We can't use a car. We can still walk. But it's almost a mile to the bridge and the road is so dark down along the water. It won't be too dark with a flashlight. We can go down through the woods to the edge of the water and walk along the shore. Oh, wait a minute. What's the matter? I just remembered. David's brother's driving out here tonight. Harvey? Yes, and his wife, Laura. They said they'd be here by 8.30, and if we wait for them, they can take us back in their car. What do you think, Doctor? That's safer than trying to make it alone. If we wait right here, perhaps we can watch the bridge and see them coming. For heaven's sake, Geraldine. What are you staring at? The bridge, Doctor. The bridge, Look! This end of it's been washed out. Oh, Doctor, this is crazy, searching for a telephone wire in back of the house. If we're seen out here, there's no telling what might happen. Please, please, Geraldine. We've got to find out where that wire was cut and splice it together again. It's our only chance of reaching the police. But it's almost nine o'clock. We've wasted an hour already. If I'm not out of here by twelve... Stop it, Geraldine. We... Stop it. Sorry, I, 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 I didn't mean to. I... What's that? It's the dog again. 
That confounded dog is tied up around here somewhere. No, no, I didn't mean that. I meant the light on the road. There's a strange light on the road. The headlight of a car coming this way. A car? Yes. Quick, behind the house and stay out of sight. It's turning into the driveway. How could a car have come out onto the island with that bridge on? Shh. They're getting out. Oh, why, it's Harvey and, and Laura. Good heaven. Oh, Harvey. Hello. Harvey. Oh, Harvey. For Pete's I... sake. Oh. Jerry, what are you doing? Playing hide and seek with us back there? Oh, Harvey, I'm so glad you came. Jerry, oh, what's I, the I, matter? I... Oh, everything, everything. But, but first you've got to tell us how you got here. Why, we just drove over the bridge and on up the road the way we always do. But how could you drive over the bridge? It's been washed out. What? Well, I saw it with my own eyes, and Dr. Pricing saw it too, didn't you, Doctor? I certainly did. Oh, you must be mistaken. We drove over the bridge not more than two minutes ago. Are you sure you haven't been on the island longer than that? Well, I'm positive. Why? Well, some very strange things have been happening here tonight. Geraldine's life was threatened, her car stolen, and mine tampered with. What? What are you talking about? Look, I'll show you. The starter in my car won't even turn the motor over. Here. Why, George, it's working now. Say, what is this, Jerry? Have you and the doctor been taking a few pills? Or did you drink too much wine at dinner? Oh, no, no. Everything he said is true. Even the telephone wires have been... I, I, I must be going out of my mind. That is my telephone ringing, isn't it? Yes, of course. Well, aren't you going to answer it? Well, I, I'm almost afraid to. Come with me, Harvey, will you, while I do? Sure. Hello? Hello. Mrs. Reeves. Yes? Listen. It's nine o'clock, Mrs. Reeves. You have three hours to live. Waiting, this endless waiting. Why don't the police come? Easy now, Jerry. They'll be here. You only phoned them a few minutes ago. But something can happen before they get here. I have a gun ready, just in case anything should happen. And I won't hesitate to use it. You have a gun, Doctor? Why, uh, yes. Uh, Geraldine gave it to me before you arrived. Oh. What's the matter? You trust me with a gun, don't you? Why, why of course. I'm... Laura. What is it? A face at the window. I just saw a face at the window. Laura, please, you're letting your imagination run away with you. No, I saw it right there. It was the face of a, a dead man. Quick, Harvey, out the back way. Right. No, no, please don't leave us. We'll be right outside the window. Jerry, I'm afraid. Well, there's, there's nothing we can do, Laura. They, they won't be far away. But I... I don't trust Dr. Prizing. You never should have given him that gun. Why not? Because... Because I think he's a murderer. Oh, huh? yes. Don't you remember how he acted at the trial when you were accused of starting the fire that killed David? He testified against you time and again, subtly, to make them think you did it. Because he started that fire himself. What on earth are you saying? I'm telling you the truth. During the trial, he swore that he wasn't on the island the night of the fire. But he was. And I can prove it. How? By this cigarette case of his. Here, look at it. You see how it's charred and melted on the side where his initials were? He must have left it in the fire that night, by mistake. But he couldn't have. If the police searched everything the next morning, they would have found it in the ashes. Not if it wasn't there. He came back for it that same night, as soon as he missed it, and dragged it out of the fire. He knew it would incriminate him if it were found in his possession, so he threw it into the lake as he drove home over the bridge. And that's where we found it, in the water, the last time we were out here. Oh, Laura, I hope you're wrong. I... So do I. But if I'm right, we're all in for... Laura! The lights! Somebody's cut off the lights! <gasps> Laura! Laura, where are you? Carry the door! Carry through the door! It's the face I saw! Uh, Laura! Laura! <laughs> it was meant to be me, Harvey. 
Whoever came through that door intended to kill me. Jerry, please. How is Laura, Doctor? I'm afraid I can't do anything for her, Harvey. She's passed on. Oh! Laura. Laura, darling. You'd better not touch the body, Harvey. Oh, leave me alone. You've done enough already, Dr. Prising. I beg your pardon? You'll have a lot of explaining to do when the police arrive, Doctor. I'll tell them how you ran away from me out there before the lights went out. And how you were here in this room when they went on again. Harvey, don't say things you'll regret later on. Just a moment. Where is the cigarette case Laura had in her hand when the lights went out? What cigarette case? You know the one I mean, Dr. Prising. The gold one that was charred in the fire. I haven't the faintest idea what you're talking about. I have. And if you're as innocent as you claim to be, you won't mind being searched. Not at all. Go right ahead. I will. Whom are you calling, Geraldine? The police. I can't understand why they haven't arrived yet. It's almost 10 o'clock. Maybe something's happened to them on the way. Maybe their car broke down. Their car, too? Huh? Nothing. Only it seems as if your car is the only one that works when you want it to. Headquarters. Oh, Sergeant. Sergeant, I can't understand why your men aren't here yet. A murder's been committed. Do you think you've been calling the police department all this time, Mrs. Reeves? Dave, it's music. It's ten o'clock, Mrs. Reeves. You have two more hours. Jerry, are you in your room? Yes, Harvey. What is it? This is our chance, Jerry. We've got to run away from Dr. Prising now while we're alone. Yes, of course, Harvey, but how will we go? In my car, it's just... Uh, wait a minute. Listen. What is it? It sounds like footsteps in the living room. Prising must be in there. No, I saw him go outside. He said he wanted to see if he could find the dog. Oh, well, there's someone in there. I'm going to find out who it is. Be careful, Harvey. He may be standing just outside the door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. You stay behind me. Is anybody there? Is anybody in the living room? No. There doesn't seem to Don't be... Don't talk oh. me, Harvey. Oh. Well, Dr. Pricey, you've been standing at this door with your ear to the keyhole? No, not exactly. I thought you were supposed to be outside, looking for that dog. I was outside for a while. But I saw someone moving around in here, so I came back. And I got here. Your wife's body was gone. What? what? Gone? Your... Laura's body is gone? I assume that it's gone. It's not where it was on the floor. But, uh, but how could it... Look here, Pricey. You were alone in this room. And so were you. What? After I left. Wasn't it, Geraldine? Well, yes, now that I think back, he was. Certainly. What's more, Geraldine saw me leave the house. And when I left, the body was still here. After that, I don't know what happened. What are you driving at? Draw your own conclusions. I've drawn mine. Why, you... Harvey, stop it! Stop it! I... I'm sorry, Jerry. I just... The dog again. Yeah. I can't understand why you didn't find that dog, Dr. Prising. He must be right out there where the old house used to be. Well, if you think you can find him, why don't you go? Good heavens, man. What? Look. There's a fire burning out there. On the grounds of the old house. Prising, you started that fire yourself and you're burning Laura's body in it to cover up your crime. Harvey, where are you going? I'm going to the fire, Jerry. I've got to stop it. I've got to put it off. I'm going to lose my mind if someone doesn't stop these awful things from happening. Won't anybody help us? Easy, Geraldine. The man who hopes to kill you was trying to break you down first. It's part of his plan. Here. Take a sip of this brandy. It'll help you. All right, thank you, Doctor. I... What's the matter? Oh, nothing, really. I just don't care for any brandy just now. What's wrong with it? Well, I, I, I didn't say anything was wrong with it. I, I just don't... You fool. Do you think I'm trying to poison you? I don't know what to think. Here. Give me that brandy. I'll drink it myself. 
There. Believe me now? I don't believe anyone. Listen to me, Geraldine. I'm the best friend you have in the world right now. You've got to understand that. Because there isn't much more time. We've got to get away from Harvey while he's still out there. What do you mean? Can't you see? He's trying to kill you. That's a lie. It isn't, Geraldine. Harvey's the one that's lied to us. He and Laura both. They intended to kill you when the lights went out. But in the darkness, Harvey made a fatal mistake. He thought it was you he was strangling, not Laura. I won't believe it's that. It's the truth. They never drove across that bridge at 9 o'clock tonight. They've been here on the island all evening. How do you know? Because we saw that bridge with our own eyes. And I saw it again just five minutes ago. It's still down. You're lying. Come out and see it for yourself. You're just trying to get me out of this house. Stop being such a fool. Here. Take this gun. If it'll give you any security, take it. And hold it in my back while we're out there. But for heaven's sakes, let's get away from Harvey while there's still a chance. All right. Give me the gun. Here. Now you keep in front of me all the time. And I'm warning you. If you make one false move, I'll kill you in cold blood. You see, Harvey and Laura were lying to us. The bridge is still down. You're right. They couldn't have come across that bridge. Of course not. The only trouble is, we can't get back over it now either. We've got to get away, Doctor. Now, before we're seen. What about that house at the other end of the, the island? People are away. But they might have a boat. Yes, of course they do have a boat. We can row to the mainland. Come on, quick. All right. I have a feeling we're being followed. It's your imagination. Hurry, Geraldine. Hurry. We are being followed, Doctor. Look behind us. There's a man with a dog. Good heavens. It's just like the dog you owned. The one that died in the fire. Yes. And the man. It's Dave. <laughs> We've lost them. Lost them in the woods. They can't be far behind. It doesn't matter now. The house is just ahead. But the boat, Doctor. The boat's not at the landing. It must be. Well, it isn't. Can't you see it isn't? Perhaps it's around and back. No, that side of the house faces the road. Then we'll have to break in and hide here until morning. Our best chance is to be inside. Where we can protect ourselves. After all, you still have a gun. But I hardly know how to use it. Then give it to me. No. You still don't trust me, do you? I don't know, Doctor. But I'm the one who's been threatened, so I really should have the gun. Very well. Wait here. I'll break through the window and come around on the inside. Did you hurt yourself? No. I'm all right. Just wait there for me and I'll unlock the door. Oh, hurry, Doctor. Please, hurry. They're on our trail again. Come inside, Geraldine. Quickly. And lock the door behind you. What's wrong, Doctor? Nothing's wrong. We're in luck. There's a phone here. If it hasn't been disconnected. Hello. Hello, operator. This isn't the operator. Tell Mrs. Reeves it's 11 o'clock. She has one more hour to live. <laughs> I won't leave this house. I'm not going to run away any longer. If they're going to kill me, let them come here and do it. Only for heaven's sakes, why don't they do it right away? Why don't they come here and get it over with instead of waiting until 12 o'clock? Geraldine, please. Well, I can't stand it any longer. I'd rather die than go through any more of this torture. I just... Sit down for a moment. Relax. And try to ease your mind. Oh, for... Dr. Prizing, what are you doing? Playing the piano. I thought it might relax you. But that melody. You! You're the one I hear at night playing David's music. Playing it right here in this house. Yes, Geraldine. I've rented this house to protect you from David and the dog. Well, stop it! Stop playing that piece! Stop it! Now stay where you are. Stay. Don't be afraid. I won't harm you. As long as you have that gun. 
But the gun won't stop David. David's dead. Is he? Listen. He's right outside the door. And in a moment, he'll be here to take you with him. No! of everything you've done. Stop! You killed me, didn't you, darling? You started that fire because you knew I was too much of an invalid to get out of bed. Stay where you are! You hated me, Geraldine. Stop! No. Your bullets can't harm me now. Nothing you can do can harm me. Because I'm dead and you're still alive. Oh, David... David, forgive me. I, I didn't know what I was doing that night. Please, please believe me. I was sorry as soon as I'd started that fire, but it was too late then. I couldn't put it out. I, I couldn't. How dare you? How dare you ask my forgiveness when you're still lying? But I'm not lying. I'm not. I, I told you everything. Why didn't you tell the police? Because I wanted to live. You'll confess everything now? Yes, David. Yes, yes, I will. If you'll only leave me alone, please. Please. It was my cigarette case Laura found in the water. I'd thrown it over the bridge that same night after I took it out of the fire. Well, I, I guess that's all we need, Harvey. Full confession with two witnesses. Harvey! Yes, Geraldine. Harvey. I do look like my brother in this dim light. Oh. And the dog Laura's holding outside is the same breed as the one you own. Laura! Laura! Did you say Laura was alive? Very much so, Geraldine. It wasn't hard for me to pretend being dead. With the doctor keeping you away from my body. Then you were all in this together. You forced this confession out of me. Yes, Geraldine. The blank cartridges Dr. Pricing slipped into that gun of yours really turned the trick. Oh, excuse me. Hello. Oh, hello, Inspector. Yes, it's all right now. You can hook the wires up again. She's told us the truth. And you'd better get to work on that bridge right away. It's uh, still down. What an outrage. All those opportunities for murder and not a drop of blood spilled all night long. Oh, well. Some days you can't lay away a corpuscle. And now... Uh, a moment while our Colgate voices bring you a message. Use Colgate tooth powder. Keep smiling just right. Use it each morning and use it at night to help you rate with every date. Use Colgate tooth powder. Tell me, do you really mean it when you say, I want to be alone? Or are you just pretending that you don't care about dates? Could it be that a little breath of trouble has cooled your romance? A little breath? What a pity to let unpleasing breath ruin your romance. Why not brush your teeth night and morning and before every date with Colgate tooth powder? Scientific tests prove that Colgate tooth powder, in seven cases out of ten, instantly stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth. So use Colgate tooth powder for all it's worth. Enjoy its exciting cleansing results, too. No amount of money can buy you a dentifrice that will clean your teeth more quickly or effectively than Colgate tooth powder. Remember the name, Colgate tooth powder, with the accent on powder. Don't take a chance with your romance. Use Colgate tooth powder. Time for me to join the moonbeams now. But before I leave under a cloud, before I'm missed, I thought I might pass on the moral of tonight's story. If you must light a fire under your husband's bed, be careful where you drop the ashes. By the way, this month's Inner Sanctum Mystery novel is Puzzle for Puppets by Patrick Quentin. And well, now it's really time to close that there squeaking door until next week when Colgate Tooth Powder brings you another inner sanctum mystery. So until then, 
Good night. Pleasant dreams. Uh. <laughs> Latest reports from doctors on the 14-day palm olive plan. Kansas City reports better complexions for 93%. New Orleans reports better complexions for 97%. In city after city, doctors tested the 14-day palm olive plan on all types of skin. And two out of three of all women tested got better complexions in 14 days. What is this 14-day palm olive plan? Wash your face three times a day with palm olive soap. Then each time take 60 seconds more to massage palm olive's lovely soft lather onto your skin as you would a cream. Then rinse. This cleansing massage with palm olive's lather brings your skin its full beautifying effect. See what palm olive can do for your skin in 14 days. Remember, doctors prove palm olive's beauty results. Remember another Inner Sanctum mystery next Wednesday night. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Thank you for listening to that episode. If you would like to listen to more Inner Sanctum, please visit otrpodcast.com. That's OTR for old time radio and podcast with an S. otrpodcast.com. On the website, you can register for my mailing list, and as a thank you, I will send you the links to more than 14 podcasts, each featuring every available episode of a popular radio program. In addition, I'll send out an email each week as I release a new episode of this podcast so that you never miss a single one. If you have enjoyed today's episode, please take a moment to subscribe and give it a five-star rating and review in your podcast app. Or if you're watching this on YouTube, just give it a thumbs up and leave a comment down below. As always, thanks for tuning in.